Hi, you're listening to Cameron from Carbon Core, and this is a Hexacopter 650 with an acrylic top dome just for display. Today, I'm going to show you some settings on the DJI NASA flight controller. So, first of all, I'm going to turn on my transmitter and go into the special menu. See the screen? And what we're going to look at first is device select, because what I've done, all these switches don't do anything at all apart from this one. It's a three position switch. And I've set it up so away is GPS, middle is attitude, and towards is manual mode. And I'll explain those in a moment. So in device select, I've got gear set to AUX2 switch, which is this black switch on the corner. I've also got my trims set to common, which is that one there. So in every flight mode, the trims, if I do any trims, they all stay the same. And I've also got the dual rate switch also set to flight mode, which means everything is on this switch because you need to assign the gear switch to change flight modes on the NASA flight controller in the multicopter. And it's useful to have flight modes in the transmitter so you can easily change your dual rates as there's a slight discrepancy between attitude and manual mode. So if I come out of this menu now and show you some of the settings in dual rates and EXP, what we've got. You can see the flight modes here. So we've got the zero at the moment. Then we go one, two. So for zero, in aileron, there you go, aileron, if I can see it on the camera, I've got 100 flight mode zero, 100 flight mode one, but only 50% in flight mode two, which is manual mode. And I've done that also for elevator. And I've also done it for rudder, except I've made rudder th only 30% in manual mode, but all the others are 100% for dual rates. Now if we go back to list, this is a JR transmitter, nothing's been reversed, it's all been done in the setup assistant. So if you're using a Futaba transmitter, your NASA settings will be slightly different. Sub trims, now this is an interesting one, because in the NASA setup assistant, you have to highlight GPS, ATI and MAN in order to, um, for the NASA to recognise what's going on when you flick the flight mode switch. So what I've done, I used endpoints in Travel Adjust. All endpoints are left at 100 everything except for gear, which is why in the secret menu at the beginning of the video, we set the gear switch to flight mode 2 or AUX 2, which is the flight mode switch. So gear is the only one we've adjusted. You have minus 86 and minus 80, or plus 86 and minus 80. But in between, because there's three things in the NASA setup assistant, GPS, ATI, and MAN, which we all want to correspond to the positions on the switch, I had to go into sub trim, and to get the middle setting to highlight, which I think was attitude mode, I had to give it some sub trim on the gear channel, along with adjusting the endpoints to highlight the three flight modes. There is no mixing, there's nothing else set up, and that should be it. So we're ready to fly. So the Carbon Core Hexacopter 650 with a tail fin, which is very helpful because when you look at it from a distance, you can really tell what way around the Hexacopter is. We have two 4-cell 5000 batteries. And what I'm going to do is just show you that. So they slide out that easily. This particular hexacopter has two pairs of wires, which don't go anywhere. These are extra wires to power a gimbal. They can just be pulled out. They're insulated at the moment. But they can easily be used for powering a gimbal or some AV transmission equipment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to power up the hexacopter. So all switches are away. That's how I like to fly. And what we've got now is a hexacopter that's ready to fly. But what I'm going to show you is if I go into manual mode and do the CSE or command stick operation, the motors don't start. You must be in GPS or attitude mode to start the hexacopter motors. You'll notice in manual mode, there's a little red light on there. In attitude mode, you get a yellow flash. 
we're not getting any red lights, which probably means there's no GPS signal. It is snowing right now. And if we go into GPS mode, we get a flashing green light. So we have a flashing green light in GPS mode. And in attitude mode, we have a flashing yellow light. And in manual mode, we currently have nothing for some reason. So what I'm going to do now, we're in attitude mode, I'm going to start the motors by doing the CSC. You'll notice that the motors stopped again, because in GPS and attitude mode, if you do not increase the throttle above 10% within 3 seconds, the motors will stop again. And something else that's interesting, if I start the motors in GPS mode and go to manual mode, And back to GPS mode. And what that shows is that the motors do not stop at low stick in manual mode. But going back to GPS or attitude mode, the motors did stop. And now we're going to have a fly. Stand up. That pitching movement, that's just me on the stick right now. But what I'd like to show you, this is GPS mode, so it will basically stay within a little space by itself. If I go into attitude mode, the multicopter completely self-levels. If I give it a little twitch, it will level itself again. So I can move the stick and it levels itself. So they're very easy to fly. I'm not doing very much to control it right now. It's in attitude mode, not GPS. I don't think there's any GPS signals available today. In attitude mode, it's self-levels. If I tilt it over and let go of the stick, it levels itself again. Now what I'm going to do is put it in manual mode. And this is why I turned the dual rates down for flight mode 2. Now in manual mode, it doesn't self-level, but if I let go of the stick and put it into attitude mode, it self-leveled, just like that. So that's a Carbon Core Hexacopter 650. It's not, I can probably turn the gains up a little bit because it was a little bit wobbly in flight like that. Um, these are Tiger Motors 2814s with 11 by 5 carbon props on two 4 cell 5000 batteries. All these electronics are available from electroflight.co.uk and multirotorcraft.co.uk and rcdrones.com in America. And there are soon to be many more carbon core dealers who can provide a setup just like this. These top domes will also be available very soon. And um, carbon core does not currently provide customer support for DJI natural equipment. However, Andrew at Multi Rotorcraft and Jamie at Electroflight certainly can. Thank you for watching and subscribe to my YouTube channel.